Hi, it's Menno and here is reaction video number nine. It's another Eurovision one. I didn't think I'd be doing this many, but I'm just really getting into the Eurovision spirit, so to speak. And then I just came across an interview of the singer who's representing France, a guy called Bilal Hassani. The first thing I noticed was his appearance. I think he looks amazing. And um, I think it's really brave for him to come out like that and to just wear whatever he likes and wear makeup and do his hair however he wants, whether that fits in with um, gender stereotypes or not, you know, just do your own thing and express yourself and be happy and be comfortable. And I think it's great that, you know, in music and in art, you always find people who are pushing those kind of boundaries. And for him to give visibility to that, you know, that there are so many other options and ways to be, I just think that's amazing. So he's already in my good books, so to speak. Of course, the Eurovision has been a place where we've seen more of this, like when Dana International won in 1998 for Israel, where she was the first transgender woman to, to take part, I think, but definitely the first one to win. Then we had Conchita Wurst in 2014 winning for Austria, a guy with a beard and gorgeous long hair in a dress looking fantastic. I just, I just love that kind of stuff. So uh, good for them. A uh, bit of history about France. France has taken part since the beginning, since 1956. It's one of the big five countries, meaning they are one of the five countries that contribute the most to the European Broadcasting Union. Therefore, they're always guaranteed a place in the final. So they kind of buy their way into the final that way. France has won the festival five times, but the last time was in 19. 77 which um, i was surprised that it's so long ago two songs in particular that i really loved from the eurovision song festival from france were c'est le dernier qui a parlé qui a raison and i hope that my french is kind of okay when i say that this was a song by amina it didn't win it came second although it nearly won uh, but it has the honor of having the longest title of a song in Eurovision history. C'est le dernier qui a parlé, qui a raison. Which means the last one who speaks is right. Kind of thing. So whoever has the last word is right. It's gorgeous. Here's a little clip. C'est le dernier qui a parlé, qui a raison. Dans ta maison, c'est celle qui m'a donné un nom, qui a raison. De toute façon, fille ou garçon, tous ces dictons sont des leçons. Ne dis pas non, le monde est ni mauvais ni bon, tu ton parent. Oh, c'est gorgeous. Ça. There's another song, uh, 2001, by Natasha Saint Pierre, a song called Je n'ai que mon âme, which means uh, I have nothing but my soul, or my soul is all I've got. Beautiful, gorgeous. Gorgeous, beautiful song. So here's a clip of that one. Mais je n'ai que mon Oh, just beautiful. All right, Bilal, do your thing. Oh, without his blonde hair. I am me. And I know I will always be. Je suis free, oui, j'invente ma vie. I am free. Ah, so he does something, some words in French, some in English. Moi je suis, I am. Ever since I was a small child, despite the looks I get, and okay. Right, it's all about being yourself. When I dream I'm a king. Sorry. Making me a bit emotional. When we hurt, when we fight for free 
for that because I can't help You choose whoever, what you want to do for work, how you want to do your hair. Good voice. He's done his brows well. When I dream, I'm a king. Love those shoulder hair. There you go. It's like, you can't break me down, you can't take me down. You can never remove my pride. Ooh. I'm a king. Ah, fabulous, I love that. Oh wow. Okay, that hit me. Because obviously the whole song is about not quite fitting in. But not letting that get you down or not, not letting people get you down. Or, or the criticism that you might get for not being, I guess in his case, a typical bloke. Or manly enough. Or gay, who knows. I think when you don't fit, yeah. when you don't really fit into those things that society or people expect you to be, for some reason, that seems to be a, a big thing. <sighs> I've had quite a lot of experience myself where I would get bullied for not being a, a masculine guy or a blokey bloke for being too girly, too effeminate, too camp or too gay. Somebody said to me something last year that, you know, and I'm, I'm 42 and I only heard this for the first time last year. And he said, it's not easy growing up gay in a straight world. And that really put things in perspective. I think we, we sort of fight a battle and I can imagine for trans people, this is even a much bigger battle where even in very small ways, you come up against a lot of prejudice, a lot of, uh, you know, stereotypical thinking about who you are as a person. Examples I can give about myself as well, obviously as a young child being beaten up for being too girly, people thinking you're gay, making jokes about it, um, sometimes not, you know, in quite a nasty way. There's a guy that um, lives in my street for 10 years, he's been giving me homophobic abuse until I got the police involved. They arrested him and then they gave him um, a harassment order, which means he's not allowed to communicate with me in any way, directly or indirectly. Because, you know, I've got a, it's, this is the street where I live. So why shouldn't I be able to walk down the street in peace without being called this, that or the other? Uh, and ever since he's left me alone. So that's great. But, you know, it kind of makes you feel shit sometimes. Then there's uh, someone at work who said, I hadn't shaved for a few days. And he said, are you trying to grow a beard to convince people you're straight? Really, Queen? I just thought that's such a weird thing to say. What, do gay men not have beards? I mean, it's really popular now among gay guys to have beards. So that's just weird. So then I asked him, did you shave this morning? And he said, yes. And I'm like, well, are you trying to convince people that you're gay? You know, it doesn't make any sense, that type of thinking. And that's why I think it's really important that you have people like Bilal who go out there and show that in, in spite of, you know, whatever other people may throw at you for being who you are. And, you know, you're just, if, you, if a guy wears a wig or makeup or a dress, who cares? You know, are you hurting anyone? No, but some people make it look like you're, you know, you're destroying society. You know, it's just crazy. So for him to go out there and put his wig and his makeup on and now on the on the on the international stage of the Eurovision to say, you know, it's like like a modern version of that song. I am what I am from La Cage for 
To believe in yourself is so important in life. You know, how many times do you tell yourself that you're shit or that you're not worth something or that you're not good enough? And they're so it's so easy for us to talk ourselves down. I think especially, obviously this is not exclusive to LGBT plus people, but it's a, it's, it can be a struggle. So to, to love yourself truly, fully for who you are and to come out with confidence and to, you know, to make the best of life and be the best that you can. I just think that's incredibly important. And that's, sorry, do my ugly crying face. I think that's a really important message and a good one. Really, that really hits home. <sighs> so I wasn't expecting that. Uh, okay, well, thank you for your time. Uh, I'm going to have a cup of tea now and relax because this was a bit intense. Sorry once again for the ugly crying face. Subscribe to my channel. Like this video. Tell me what your thoughts are. If you struggled with these things and if you have, then how you found strength. Because I think it's very important that we talk about these things and we support each other where we can. So on that note, ciao. Subscribe to my videos. Check out my other videos. And tell me what song would you like me to react to next.